So welcome ladies and gentlemen. So today we're going to answer that ultimate question. Is Pez 2020 worth pre-ordering? Some of you very well may be on the fence about it. I'm here to give you guys my opinion. Now remember this is my opinion. Some may agree, some may disagree, but that's why I love YouTube. That's why I love doing these videos because just reading the comments is always quite fascinating to hear what you guys have to say. Thank you very much for slagging me off, by the way, in my online video saying that I suck. It was quite funny, I have to say. And uh, yeah, I, I definitely need to practice when it comes to that. Before we dive into it, make sure you are liking, subscribing, hitting that notification bell. We are gonna have the best Master League series I feel this year, without a shadow of a doubt. So without further ado, let's find out if PES 2020 is worth pre-ordering. Okay, so I want to go through a couple of different points that I've kind of written down um, and discuss them. I don't know how long this video is going to be, so bear with me. And of course, leave your comments below. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was this demo build sort of compared to others. Um, you know, I've played them all, and I'm sure you guys as well have if you're a big Pez fan like myself. And I have to say, when it, when, when it comes down to it, this is definitely one of the more refined demo builds. Um, PES 2019 demo was all right. Um, not the best in the world. 18, I think, or 17, one of them was really, really unresponsive, which made it quite hard to score. I remember it. It was either 17 or 18, but because it was so unresponsive, it was a very difficult game to score. And then when the full game came out, of course, it was totally different to the build that we played previously in the demo. But I honestly feel like PES 2020, yes, there are niggles and yes, there are refinements that need to be improved. Overall though, on the balance of play is one of the more refined, one of the more polished demos out there. Yes, there's clipping, I know that. Yes, the AI is a bit passive at times. But still, when you look at the gameplay and how far it has come, you know, we're talking about now more of a, a simulation type game, especially offline, by the way. I'm really talking about offline here as opposed to online, if you know me, I'm an offline player. So that's sort of my first point. I have to say, demo build wise, 2020 is better than what we've previously seen before. Now my big question is whether the final product will be the same. I really hope it is the same as the demo, but obviously more refined, more polished, uh, and ready to play out the gates. Enjoyable, instantaneous, responsive is there. AI is better and all that fun stuff. So that's really my first point. Demo-wise, I've been impressed with the build that they have put out there. Now let's talk also about the features this year, I feel, compared to last year. Really going from 18 to 19, I don't think when it came to like features, and I'm talking about the dribbling that's been added, the physicality that's been added. 18 to 19, we didn't see a huge leap. The game was a little bit different, yes, and I know it's a long time now since we've played those, so it's hard to really remember. But I, I don't remember a demo coming out, and, and really, when it comes to gameplay, it has enhanced quite a bit. I still don't understand people that come into comments and they say, this just looks like 19. You clearly haven't played the game then, because play 20 and then play 19 again and realize the difference between the two. The finesse dribbling, let's talk about that. Now, I'm still learning it, and there's tutorials out there. You know, you can check out the likes of Spoody Pizza, of course. Um, it's got some great tutorials. Um, Whedon's does some great tutorials with the Midnight Kid, uh, Seppo. I mean, there's a whole bunch of people out in the PES community, and that's why we love the community, because I think we are so gelled together, and we all kind of come up with these tutorials and different videos for you guys to enjoy. Um, so if you want to learn about the dribbling, then get some tutorials going. But having that level of quality this year as opposed to last year has really amped up the game, I feel. You can do stuff with Messi, with Ronaldo, that yes, you may have been able to do it last year, but this year is a completely different ball game. You can pull off some ridiculous moves if you get it down to a T. And it's not just a case of getting the analog stick and playing around with it, I have a controller here. Uh, but you know, combining that with the right stick, with the left stick, with sprinting, you can come up some really, really cool fancy ways to dribble around opponents. And we're gonna see that online, I feel, as the game sort of does get released. The physicality, I think that for me is the one that I'm absolutely loving. I really am loving the fact that big, tall players can, <laughs> sorry, I just died there, 
can literally um, bundle out the way the little guys without question. And it's added a new element to the game, hasn't it? It's brought in the ability now to have a big tank up top. And just because he isn't fast, it doesn't mean you can't use him for what he's really there for. It's like having a basketball player who's playing as sort of a center. He's massive, he's not speedy, but he's there for a simple job of standing near the basket, getting the rebounds, putting the ball in the basket when they can. Now, if you get someone who's huge like Peter Crouch back in the day, great example, um, you know, he's not the quickest. Hell no, Peter Crouch wasn't. I mean, he did run like a giraffe, but the guy was good in the air. He still had the strength. I mean, he wasn't the strongest, but still, you get my point. Having that physicality element is huge this year. And I'm looking forward to being able to find those little gems in Master League and using them for what they're worth. I actually feel this year like stats have, have been more refined to players. Like you'll see the difference between a player that has a physical attribute of an 85 compared to a 60. Whereas last year, mm, not so much. The little animations of double tapping uh, tackle now where they pull players back or they'll do these little contextual challenges to slow someone down are really, really nice. We didn't have the luxury of that last year. If Ronaldo was through on goal, that was it. Now you can try to try and keep chasing him, double tack tackle, you know, double X, and then he'll try and pull him back. Yes, you've given away the foul. Maybe you'll get a red card, who knows? But at least you've stopped that counter attack and we've added a new element this year. And I just feel like feature wise, PES 2020 is quite a big step up from 19. So let's talk about online and uh, sort of offline players. Um, I'm gonna strategically talk about online because I don't play it a whole lot. But my standpoint would be, uh, if you've played the demo, you've played online, you've liked the uh, servers, they haven't been too laggy for you, the connection's been decent, the gameplay's been really nice for you, I think you'll be okay. I'd say go ahead and pre-order it. But if you're still on the fence, I definitely say wait. Wait to see what Konami do with my club. We haven't really had any news about it. Um, in August this month, Gamescom is obviously coming up. That's when they're going to probably show a little bit of my club. Maybe Master League, we'll talk about that in a minute. So if you're an online player and you're still on the fence, I definitely say wait because you want to see what my club has to offer. If you don't touch offline at all and you don't play Master League, it very well may be just not a great idea to pre-order right now. I'd say wait for it. Um, whereas talking about offline, I'd say if you've enjoyed offline even the slightest bit and you're getting kind of bored of 19, you definitely want to go ahead and pre-order it because my Master League, I'm going to say my club there, Master League is certainly going to be an improvement from what we've seen. You know, we've got the, uh, the dialogue effect, hopefully the transfers are fixed. There's certainly things they've worked on this year to try and improve the game mode. The cutscenes add something to it. I mean, they may just be little things and, you know, you kind of create your own story-ish in Master League, but it's something we haven't seen before in PES. Um, if you play FIFA, then yeah, you've sort of seen the similar sort of things. But 17, 18, 19, we didn't really see much of a leap in Master League. Now, it's not going to be huge. Don't expect groundbreaking Master League here. But certainly, if you've enjoyed the gameplay, I would say pre-order it for offline because it's going to be a hell of a lot better, I'd say, than last year. Now, another question as well is, if you have a console and you have a PC, what do you get it on? It's a big debate and it's a big question. And for me, as I keep stating, I'm offline primarily, so I don't have to worry about heading online and not finding anyone to really play with. I will tell you this much, the PC community is limited online. You're not going to find tons and tons and tons of people playing it. Um, you're probably better off buying the PS4 version if you have it, maybe even the Xbox. I know you can't do option files, which is a shame, um, but if you have a PS4 and an Xbox, get it on PS4, it's a no-brainer. If you've got a PS4 and a PC, but you are primarily an offline guy and you want the overlays and the mods and all the goodies that come with it, get it on PC. Download the demo, see if your PC can run it. If it can, go for it. You will not be disappointed with the ability that the community has. The game is only going to get better. Trust me, it's absolutely phenomenal. But online on PC can be a little bit hit and miss. So you've kind of got to think about which way do you want to go? And obviously, you've got to make sure that your PC can run it. So think about those before you do pre-order it. Um, but on a whole, PC version is exceptional offline and uh, a no-brainer. 
So let's finish off this video today by discussing something that I wanted to mention, sort of talking about Konami as a whole, talking about the Pez series uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, and I will say this, I do feel like Konami finally are starting to listen to us a lot, lot more as a community. They, they realize that Pez is a big community game. It is. You know, the option files that we have, the edit mode that we have, they all work in tandem to produce what we play, right? Licensing isn't a huge issue in Pez because we know why. Xbox, I know it's tough, sorry for you guys. Maybe one day Microsoft will sort out the USBs. That's nothing to do with Konami, it's a Microsoft issue. Um, and I will also, also say that in no shape or form am I affiliated with Konami, okay? They don't pay me to say stuff. What I say is my opinion. If there's something to criticize, you guys know I do it. But I also do it in a constructive manner. There's no point slagging things off, making raging videos non-non-stop because you're not gonna get your point across. There are certain ways to do things and just being a little bit constructive, a little bit critical, but in the right way can get things done. Konami this year, they did add a really nice camera angle. Whether you wanna play on it or not is optional, but it's there, the stadium camera. Obviously the broadcast camera as well has been refined. They got rid of the zoom in feature, which was absolutely horrendous by the way. And they listen to us. And I think that is the key. And even the fact that they put edit mode in the demo for the first time ever, I've never seen it before, shows you that they want you to play the game day one. They want you to enjoy the game. They want the community to go in there, create the kits early, get a little bit of a head start. And then when it does come out, you can simply import the option file yourself and you can play it. And obviously, please do head over to PezUniverse.com as well for the memberships. We are opening them up pre-order for PES 2020. Um, I will have a video coming out about our option files, about our memberships, uh, and talking about that in a different video, but please do check it out either way. But I just feel like Konami, they're starting to listen. You know, Adam Batty's been very good on Twitter with answering questions, letting people know that, look, we know that AI is a little bit passive, we're improving it. They want to hear the feedback. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to give them feedback. Now, if something isn't fixed on launch day, it doesn't mean it can't be fixed afterwards. Post patches are very, very common. We know this. It's not difficult now to go into the code, change something and fix it. Uh, and also that's something I wanted to touch on, coding as well. I know I talk about it a lot and the clipping um, in pairs sometimes is a little bit annoying. And I think sometimes a little bit harsh when I say things like that, because number one, I'm not a developer and I know that the level of coding now that they have in games is so extreme. You know, maybe it used to be like that. Now it's like massive, right? The difference is you can change one thing in a code and it completely foobars the rest of it up. Now for us as consumers who sit there and play the game and we moan about something, we can say, why is it this fixed? Why isn't that fixed? Whereas the developers are like, well, we're trying to fix it, but if we fix this problem, another one arises. You know, We don't know the ins and outs of it all. Um, and I feel sometimes I am a little bit harsh in what I say, but that's just me being me. Um, you, you don't really think about the whole coding element. So just wanted to get that out of the way. But I do feel like Konami are listening and I want you guys to give feedback. I want you guys to be honest about the game. But coming into a video and slagging it off and saying this is the same, it's, it's BS, isn't it? It's not the same as 19. Anyone that's played 2020 will know it is a different game. Yes, the AI does need to be tweaked, refined, enhanced, made a little bit more aggressive. We're also playing an exhibition, by the way, which we know is slightly easier than Master League. Is the scripting still gonna be there sometimes? I don't know. On Legend, possibly. It's Legend difficulty. It's always going to be a little bit evident at times. But I feel on a whole, Konami are listening. They're starting to improve. They're starting to show that Pez has a really, really good future. I'm enjoying the game this year. I think the demo's been fantastic. If they sort out the niggles, the little things, we've got one hell of a game on our hands. The pace is perfect. The physicality's there. You know, the finesse dribbling is a really nice element to add to the game. Things they could work on though, surely. The shooting, I mean, uh, you know, sure, is uh, likes of the shooting. They could be, you know, varied up a little bit more by the AI, shooting low, shooting high. Um, maybe next year they will add a different shooting mechanic different defending mechanics are a possibility. There's lots of things they can do, but the core gameplay this year is really nice. It's a little bit of polish, a little bit of polish, polish it up, and we've got a special game on our hands. But I honestly think for me, yes, I will pre-order PES 2020. It's a no-brainer, you guys know that. I, if you honestly pre-ordered 19, which we know how that was when it, when it launched, 
you've got to pre-order the Pez 2020. Still don't know how it's gonna be when it launches, but I have a feeling Konami will listen this year more than ever. They'll keep the same pace and they'll just fix what needs to be fixed. Anyway, that is all my opinions for today. Me rambling on as always, let me know your thoughts below and I will continue to bash out the videos. Any ideas you have, any videos you want me to showcase, please do send them my way, officialtruebrits at gmail.com. I'll be more than happy to share them. But until next time, guys, subscribe for more, hit the like button, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.